and that a lot of times will make the tape play back like it's uh, uh, brand new. So again, we've got the uh, cassette in there, and now I'll take the uh, spool in there, rather, and I'll wind it up until the slack is out of this uh, spool. And now we've got the slack out of the tape in this area. And so we'll simply put the case back on the tape. And to put the case back on it, uh, kind of get it in a position and hold the uh, gate up a little. And you can see this side's unattached when it's like this. So you kind of have to hold it in place with your finger. Hold the gate open, though. Don't have it down like in the closed position. Have it up. And then just simply place it back on the tape and push the uh, gate back in place. Hold it together, flip it over, and put all the screws back in. Okay, and to wrap up here, I'll just show you the features of a mini DV tape and an 8 millimeter tape. The tape repair is basically the same. It's really fundamental. You just literally uh, scotch tape the, the videotape onto the reel or, or splice it together with scotch tape. Uh, with mini DV, it is a little bit more sensitive. Some people think that uh, having the tape on there can damage the video heads. Uh, I've always done it and never had a problem. Uh, if you feel more comfortable, you can buy audio tape repair glue, but because audio tapes have gone by the wayside, you can't uh, really find audio tape repair glue uh, very handily. Some Radio Shacks will still carry it and you can actually glue the tape back together but uh, I found that scotch tape works fine. You just of course have to cut the tape in half so it's a thinner piece and uh, it is harder to work with mini DV tape because it's so small but if you uh, just weight the tape down, get it in line and uh, put a piece of tape on there, it will work. Uh, the mini DV tapes have the same basic release for the gate as you can see, it's more of a switch on the side, but when you pull that down, the gate opens up to reveal the tape. And this, you would uh, go through the same procedure, inspect it, see if it's come off the reel or if it's broken. With many DV tapes, I don't think I've ever seen one come off the reel uh, because the, uh, the tapes are all newer and also in the cameras, they don't pull as hard. The little motors are not strong at all, so they have a hard time pulling the tape off the reel. What usually happens is it's a tape that's been jammed in a camcorder, and they rip the tape out of the camcorder, and it stretches or breaks the tape. As again, you don't have to open up the case if it's broken and both ends are revealed. You just have to be able to get them out of there. And to do that, obviously the tape is locked. As you can see, I'm putting pressure on it. It will not come out. Uh, again, there's a release in the same area as a VHS tape, but it's not a button. You push down, and you can probably see that little, I've got a little glare on the tape there. I'm pushing a release down, and I'll hold that down with my thumb here. That allows the tape to be released to where it comes out of the cassette freely. So what you would do is press down on this release, pull each side out to give yourself some tape to work with, uh, scotch tape them back together, and then just simply uh, yeah, that might be easier said than done. I'll try to use a screwdriver here. Just simply wind the tape back up. Okay, and then the tapes are practically as good as new again. Uh, one thing with mini DV tapes is that a customer might be tempted to use it again in their camcorder, so make them aware that once you've done the tape repair and transferred it to a DVD, uh, mark the tape clearly and, and, and put on there, do not use. Because a lot of people, once they have them on DVD, so that they can uh, save a few dollars. They'll go back and reuse all the tapes that we transferred for them uh, just to re-record over the original footage. Uh, make sure that they know not to reuse the tape because uh, over the course of time and the insides of cameras get really hot, the splice can come undone and uh, could get caught up inside their camera and cause problems. So once it's been repaired, uh, just make sure that the customer knows not to ever use the tape again. And the uh, last tape is a uh, regular 8 millimeter tape. This one's a high 8 tape. Uh, one thing to know about high 8 tapes is that you can record 8 millimeter, high 8, or digital 8 on the same kind of cassettes. Uh, so that's just for your information. Uh, a lot, it doesn't have anything to do with tape repair. I thought I'd mention it while we've got one here, though. Uh, even though a tape says high 8, uh, it could have uh, digital 8 content on it. So when you're timing out tapes like this, if they're in digital 8, the maximum time on the tape would actually be one hour rather than 120 minutes. 
back to the tape repair process on these. Again, all the tape repairs are the same. They usually comes off the reel or the tape's been split in two. There's really nothing else that can go wrong with it other than if the tape is physically so crushed that it's in pieces, in which case you just have to take it apart, uh, get a brand new case. If a reel is broken, just try to remove the parts that are broken and uh, if necessary, wind it from one reel to the other reel and tape the end of the tape onto a new reel uh, from a brand new tape and you know just use your uh, judgment on how to repair those every one of them can be different uh, but on a tape like this again you'll need a miniature screwdriver for these little screws and you would just take it apart if necessary again I don't think that I've ever uh, rarely have a 8 millimeter tape or a mini DVT tape that has to be where you have to actually take apart the cassette normally the the bad tape will be exposed on these 8 millimeter tapes, the gate release is on the opposite side. It's just a little switch right here that you pull back with your finger and then the gate will come open. And uh, to release the tape, again, it's locked in place. Uh, this one actually did give way a little bit, but there is a release here, same as a mini DV tape. You push down on it. When you push down on it, it releases the lock on the reel so that the tape can come free. And then the reason you do that is just to give yourself extra room on each side if the tape is broken in the middle so that you have uh, longer tails to work with so you can splice it back together. And once you have it spliced back together, you simply again just uh, wind the reels up. And on these 8 millimeter tapes, it's only this side that will move. You can't, ro you can't wind this one uh, counterclockwise, or rather clockwise. You have to wind the left reel uh, counterclockwise and that will take all the slack out. And then again, with, just like with mini DV tapes, make sure that the uh, customer would know not to go to try to, you know, reuse these tapes once they've been repaired. And the final thing I wanted to demonstrate regarding tape repair is that sometimes you'll have a customer bring in a tape and it will look fine, but there will be certain places on the tape that won't play back well, or the whole tape won't play, or the audio track will not play. And what I want to show you is how to inspect the actual tape for damage itself. A lot of times what will happen is if a VCR is getting old, they play the tape through and it'll be playing back fine for them. Uh, but what they don't realize is the whole time it's playing, they'll be making a scratch along the entire length of the tape because uh, an arm or something like that will be bent inside the VCR. And I'll try to get this tape in the uh, light here to where you can see how it's damaged. Uh, I don't know if you can tell right about here, there's a wrinkle. And that's something that a customer may not notice or they may not even know how to really inspect the tape. But if there is something like that, even though it looks minor and it looks like a majority of the tape is okay, that will completely destroy a videotape. And that's another reason to encourage people to transfer their tapes to DVD uh, because any kind of wrinkling or anything like that, that happens all the time. Uh, we've had a lot of customers come in with wedding videos and they'll ask us to fix them not realizing that once something like that happens to a tape, it's done for. There's nothing you can do about it. There's nowhere you can send it out to. It's just pretty much trashed. So, again, if, if a tape won't play back right or something, just inspect it. And if you see a wrinkle or something, which 99% of the time they look just like this, it'll be a scratch along the entire length of the tape because something in the VCR was scratching it as it was playing. So it literally leaves a scratch the entire length of the tape. A lot of times it'll be playing back well in their VCR and they don't realize as it's playing, uh, it's going past the, the uh, playback head inside the VCR, uh, but as it's winding up on the reel, it's being scratched and that ruins the entire tape. And that actually happens, uh, I've seen about five or six tapes like that uh, within just the last two or three years. So uh, that's just one more uh, thing to know about the videotapes. Other than that, most of the repairs are fairly simple. It's just a matter of uh, getting the tape spliced back together, cutting out the bad portions, and then playing it back as you record it to DVD.